special. Murder was the case that, that they, they gave, gave me. me. You hear me? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are tuned in to the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most, Finding Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo Holes. And today, I got a very, very special guest on my show. The one and only, yeah, the incomparable, the impressionable, Stephen A. <laughs> Smith. What's my happening, man. Steve? What's going on, baby? How you I'm doing, man? Boy. How you doing, boy? I'm being interviewed by you. This is strange. This man. is strange, hey, but I'm loving it. This is what we do, man. <laughs> so, so jumping off into it, man, how long have you been doing this, this, this thing you've been doing as far as following sports and broadcasting and writing, you know, paragraphs about it? How long have you been doing this? About 25 years, man. Um, I started off in around 1993. Um, it's been just just been doing what I've been doing. Starting off in the newspaper industry, uh, people thought that I, I told my mom I wanted to be in television, and, but I said I don't have you know I can't just smile and look at the prompter. That's mm. not my style. I need to have substance. I need to have content. And so, you know, you're in the newspaper industry. That was before the advent of social media and all mm -hmm. that other stuff. You had to grind and start your way to high school sports, to mm. college sports, to pro sports. Mm. You got editors editing your copy and things of that nature. Back then, you had over 1,600 daily major metropolitan newspapers throughout the country. You didn't even have 15 African-American columnists. And when you talk about columnists, that means you have the license to opine and editorialize and give your opinions. A lot of black folks weren't allowed to give their opinions. Mm. So by the year 2003, after I worked my way up in the business and I became a general sports columnist for the Philadelphia Inquirer, I was the only the 21st African-American in the history of this country to be a general sports columnist. Mm. So it's like, you know, again, it was all of that substance that I was after. I wanted to start off in the newspaper industry because I had the info. And if you had the info and you could put it together with words and write it down, they could never question your credibility. Right. And once you knock that out the box, then all of a sudden everything else just flows because I opened my mouth, I got something to say, and you couldn't deny that I had substance attached to it because I had a reporter's background that validated me. And how much of school played a role in that right there? Oh, it was it, it played a lot because, you know, I went to an historically black college, went to Salem State University. It didn't have a journalism program. It had a mass communications program. But the reason why school was so important is because the internships came from me being in school. Mm -hmm. Had I not been in school, I wouldn't have got the internship. Right. Had I not gotten the internship, I wouldn't have had practical experience that said, okay, let's take a chance on giving this cat a job because he has the practical, the practical experience to back him up. I would have just been somebody. Remember, again, social media wasn't there. So no. You could just blog and show off your stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People, they, there was nothing like that available to us. So you had to work your way through the terrain to climb up that ladder. You had to get other people willing to make a sacrifice and give you an opportunity and take a chance on you. And that was the politics of the game. What was the column that you wrote or the interview that you did that gave you the inspiration to know that you could be where you at now? Oh, man. Um, I was in, I was a high school reporter for the New York Daily News. It was 1993. I mean, I was in school writing for the school newspaper. I was a disc jockey. I had my own late <laughs> night show. It was called Tender Moments. As where you I was, should. I was, show, I was playing slow jams. Hello. All, all the cats, you know, they in college, they with their honeys and all of this other stuff, and they like, play this song. It got to the point where the ladies were coming up to me, play this song tonight at about 10.45 no. when Hello. I'm with my boo. No. And, all this, and I was doing it, so it was like that. But then when I got in the industry, um, I was a high school reporter for the New York Daily News in 1993, and it was this dude named, uh, I believe it was Carlton Hines, it was his name. He was a former star basketball player in New York, but he was drug dealing. Mm. And so what happened is, is that this cat walked up to him in the Bronx, broad daylight, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, took him out, shot to the head, broad daylight, people going to the supermarket, all of this other stuff, and they just saw him just get his head blown off in broad daylight. Well, I did the story, but I went and I got his mom mm. and I got his brother. Mm. And then it was a compelling a story because the mother just refused to believe, regardless of the mountain of evidence, that her son was selling drugs. She just refused to believe he was a part of that game. And so I got that story and I got the inside scoop to such a degree that everybody came clamoring towards me. And they was like, this dude 
just knows how to go get that info, mm -hmm. and we got to pay attention. So suddenly the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Philadelphia Daily News, the Seattle Times, and all of these other places came looking for me to be a reporter. And mm. I said, I must be doing something right, because everybody for across you. the country wants to get a hold of me. Mm. They weren't looking for you like the police be looking for mm -mm. you, but they were looking for you. They were looking for me. They were I like that. Me. I no like way. that. That's I right. love that because, see, <laughs> that shows growth. And see, a lot of people just see you on TV, and they just think Stephen A. just woke up one morning and just they just gave him a job and threw him on TV. No, it's a struggle. It's a grind to this. Anybody that's successful had to have something to, well, to strive for to get what The thing had. about it is, man, I never really paid attention to that. I'm going to tell you why. The, I, I don't like to get pissed off. I'm passionate enough mm -hmm. normally. I don't need an excuse to get more pissed off than I usually am. I truly don't. I'm a happy dude, but my trigger's quick. You wow. know, it's like I, I, I'm not going. I'm not going to take much nonsense. And the reason I'm that way is this: Let's say, for example, they see Stephen A. They say screaming A. and all of this other stuff. Damn right, I'm loud. I'm sitting. I, I, I bring the barbecue. It ain't just the barbershop. The barbecue. Mm -hmm. You know, the family yeah. reunion. I bring all of that to television because that's how I like to roll. Right. My thing is, is that when cats come at me and try to question oh, this is all he is. What, it, what they're doing in essence is trying to get you to forget about my resume. Mm. If you look at my resume, New York Daily News, Philadelphia Inquirer getting promoted nine times, having a salary that jumped from 53 to 250,000. You look at me on television, CNN, SI, CNN Sports Illustrated at one time, go from there to Fox Sports, go from there to ESPN, and all of this stuff in between. Anytime somebody says something, if you notice, they get quiet when I say, can you please show me your resume and put it up next to mine? Mm. Because as a black man, I know that there's very, very few people that have the resume that I have. Say that. Working in New York City and then mm. Philadelphia Inquirer. Those are two of the top five markets mm. in the country. You don't just get, you don't just get those opportunities. But that ain't they, the who you know, that's, that's right. the what you know. And what they want to do is, they want to see me on TV now and say, I'm loud or I'm obnoxious or I'm this or that. They don't, they forget that I was a beat writer and a reporter, that I was breaking stories. I was doing stuff that these cats have never done. I mm. have broken more stories in one year than most people you see have broken in their entire careers. So when they start talking smack, when I, I'm like, who told you that the, the, the Sixers was thinking about trading for Tracy McGrady? <laughs> Who told you all those troubles that Allen Iverson got into? Who told you that LeBron was going to South Beach mm. before LeBron announced it to the world? Who told mm. you these things? That was me. Who told you that Shaq? You remember years ago, you and I, man, I said to you, Shaq, go on, dog. And all I like, didn't believe it. Cube was like, no. You was I like, no. Nah. I said, he's gone. Kobe wanted them gone, bus sided with Shaq, um, bus sided, sided with Kobe, Shaq gone. And then all of a sudden, Shaq left, and everybody like, well, damn. And you then they it. forget all of this stuff. Yeah. And that's why, so I look at it from the standpoint that when people try to come at me and they try to label me and just talk about my loudness or my mouth or whatever the case may be, I always laugh about it because they're trying to question, they're trying to get you to forget my credentials. I get mad at us as black people when we allow them to forgive, to forget my credentials. Because mm. if they forget my credentials, what are they going to do about your credentials? No. What are they going to do about yours on the come up, those that aspire to be a journalist or aspire to be where I'm at? Say if you're going to forget what my credentials are, what do you think they're going to do when it's your turn? Mm. Don't let them forget. No. And that's why you'll see me raise up on people from and time you to time. So how do you feel about... Um, being one of the first people to have the type of show that you have, which is First Take, mm -hmm. and now I'm watching imitations, mm -hmm. duplications, yeah. Yeah, impersonations. I'm mm -hmm. watching it all, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, as a rapper, I had to deal with that at a certain point when I was watching people do what I did mm -hmm. and was getting credit for what I did, and they spent off and did the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I learned how to take it on the chin and say, you know mm -hmm. what, I'm inspirational. How right. do you feel about that? Um, I don't think about them. Uh, my attitude is I'm still doing what I'm doing. I don't have time to look back. It's like a track me. Hmm. I turn back, I look back, you might catch me. Let me keep striving forward doing what I do. Um, I, I will be the first to admit that, you know, when it comes to competition, um, you're paying attention to those ahead of you. To those behind you, you're not really paying much attention to. But my cause for it is annihilation. Hmm. I'm not trying to just we. I'm not trying to 
just beat you. I'm, I'm trying to be Jordan-esque. I'm trying to make it so you don't even want to compete with me. You understand? Do you match my energy? Can you, can you match my intellect? Can you match my information? Can you match my context? But I'm also mission-minded. Wow. Uh, you know, when I think about, I remember years ago, and you'll remember this when, when I bring it up to you. I was hosting my show, quite frankly, on ESPN2. And I had this black conservative named Armstrong Williams on, mm. all right? And I had you on. Yes, sir. Via satellite. And I brought you on because Snoop Dogg is not only a hip hop artist, a hip hop guru and mogul, we all know that, but a highly intelligent individual who can articulate and disseminate a message to the masses that will resonate with everybody. Mm -hmm. My whole thing with Armstrong Williams, who's a relatively nice guy, mm -hmm. he has conservative views and he was critical, very critical of you and others. And what you said to him was, it ain't always about the criticism. Help a brother out. Educate us. Be constructive when you come in at us, and maybe we'll be receptive to listening. It was important to me that a show like that transpired because it aligns with my goals. I know I got mine. Right. I'm going to continue to get mine. I know you got yours. You're going to continue to get yours. But the common denominator that we share, along with Magic Johnson, right. Cube, and so many right. others, is that we don't hesitate to give back. Mm -mm. And we don't let you define how we're going to give back. Now. We're letting you know there's a level of education that comes along with this. And so for me to have a show, to have a two-hour platform every weekday morning, mm. it's like... I'm not sitting there trying to bring people on just to get ratings. I want you to know who I know. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that if you say something about Snoop, well, you know what? You might have to deal with Stephen A. Yeah. And not only will you might have to deal with Stephen A, but you might have to deal with Stephen A bringing Snoop on mm. to address you because at one time or another, he may not have had the right platform in order to do that. Yes, sir. I'm making sure that I'm serving as a conduit to all of those cats from my community who mean the world to us and is about uplifting all of us so we can make a better way for all yes, of us. Sir. That's what it's all about, and that's part of the mission, and that's why I can't lose because my mission is greater yeah. than most of my competition, in my opinion. They don't have a chance in my mind. That's how I approach it. I like that. I like that. You're way ahead of the competition. I don't even look at them no more either. I just look at, you know, what I do and what I'm supposed to be doing, and in that way, everything plays the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. We play to win. No doubt. Well, That's you win it. You win a lot, bro. <laughs> I, I'm in the compound. I can see it for myself. The evidence is here. Hey, Got man. a damn compound. Hey, Steve, but I mean, what did you think, man? I was, I've been doing this for so long, and I had to figure a way to, to become a businessman mm -hmm. and not just become, you know, the worker. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we come in the game as being the worker or the player, so to speak, because right. we love to play and we love to score and get highlights and mm -hmm. beat the MVPs and, yeah. the, and championships. But after, after a certain point of watching the world, the owners run the world. Mm -hmm. I want to be an owner. Right. I don't want to be a player or a general manager. I want to be one who owns so mm -hmm. that way I can dictate and put in position the people that I want to put in position. Right. So that's what my play is all about. The interesting part about it is that when I look at somebody like, like you, what I would say to you is that ownership comes in a variety of forms. I view you as an owner, mm -hmm. and I don't know all the details about everything that you do. I just know that you're your own man and you're successful and the things that you do resonate with so many people in such a profound way that you have a level of freedom that those owners only wish they had. Mm. Everything ain't about dollars and cents because there's only but so much dollars to go around. Sometimes ownership, sometimes leadership and all of these other intangibles come in a variety of forms. You got Snoop, you got a guy like Dr. Dre who I think is a genius, yes, an sir. absolute genius. Who can tell him anything? I mean, really, I mean, what are you going to tell Dr. Dre? You're going to tell him much. But the same applies to a guy like MJ. MJ is an owner of a team. Yes. But one of 30. He answers to the hierarchy that is the NBA, but not so much. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He got his own compound in yeah. Florida. He's got say his that. own life. He's doing all these things. Now, you might have people that look at MJ and say, well, damn, I wish that he was more outspoken, more politically conscious. And my attitude is, He's hiring brothers and sisters. What is your problem? Everywhere. What is your problem? You might look at Magic Johnson. You say, oh, you know, Magic Johnson's doing stuff in the urban community. And my God, he's with Starbucks and the Magic Johnson theaters. And we have to applaud him. But at the same time, boy, I wish he stopped smiling sometimes. He's getting along with all of these folks. But he's hiring people. He's employing them. He's educating them. 
you're doing the same thing. Yes, sir. Dre's doing the same thing and so many others. And to me, that's what it's all about. And a lot of times people, particularly from our community, want to be about the business of telling you how you're mm. supposed to do it. And you know, you got somebody like Jay-Z that'll be the first to let you know. <laughs> He'll sit up there, as for the critics, tell me I don't get it. Everybody can tell you how to do it. They never did it. Man. And I'm like, I love that line Man, because it's that. the absolute truth. Everybody got opinions, but so many people have walked the path that cats like y'all have walked. So sometimes shut the hell up, mm -hmm. fall back, and, and just acknowledge what cats are doing and learn from them and be the ultimate thief that you're supposed to be. Still brilliant, still knowledge, still motivation and all of those different things. Because that's damn sure what I do. Wow. And I'm not, I, I give a speech, every one of my speeches that I give throughout this country, I say this one line, I say, I'm brilliant because I know I'm not. I simply listen to those who do and I learn from them. That is what makes me brilliant. Love it. That's what it is, and, and, and people need to learn that. Love it. Hi, I'm Stormy Friends, and I'm bringing you the weather city to city, titty to titty. Today, we're looking at the weather from Asafat, Maryland. Oh, sorry, Massachusetts. Maryland. Sorry, it's Asafat, Massachusetts. Um, things are good. There's a long, hard shaft of cool air coming into Asafat today. So, um, dick for cover, I mean duck for cover, as soon as you see that cloud rolling in. Do I need to wrap that up somehow? You should always wrap it up. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see in asphalt, it's really, um, still really cloudy over here. And, um, you know, you can get a little sun later. Um, wait, is my thing coming into? It is, you can see it. I'm so unprepared. <laughs> <laughs>
who the messenger is mm. as opposed to the message and, and then why and then wonder why the hell we tell them they lost. Now, you, you spitting truth right there because even when it comes to like raising my kids, right, my sons, mm -hmm. when I was raising my sons when they was younger, I would say certain things to them that they wouldn't listen to, but then I would bring in Deion Sanders or a couple of my NFL buddies or some people that were celebrities and they would say the same thing yep. that I said and my kids would listen to them, and I'd be like, well, you know what? I'm going to get smart now. I'm going to start using my homies That's right. to help deliver the message to my kids because we all a family, and it takes a village to raise one kid anyway. And I'm looking at my sons now. they they productive young men. That's they right. they able to move and groove, and they're and they, they respectable citizens in the world right. based off of the teachings that I gave them, mm -hmm. not just for me, but for me using my friends and my people that can teach as, uh, alongside of me while I'm trying to raise these kids. And that's what we're supposed to be doing because we have an obligation to give back but also not to tolerate stupidity mm -hmm. and not to give the impression that you're going to get over. If you let folks get over, you're get, particularly youngsters on a come up, you set the stage for them to be disappointed, their hearts get broken, because reality is going to pimp slap them. It's right. just that simple. You can't, you can't do that to them. You have to let them know this is what is going to be. This is what is waiting for you, whether you like it or not. And I'm really, really big on that, bro. It's, it's, I'm just, it's about being real. It's about being as authentic as you can possibly be. When people look at you, they got to know you mean it. And I know if nothing else about me, when you listen to me and you see me speak, you know I mean what the hell I say. In a real way. So, I know you know my main man, uh, Jamie Foxx. <laughs> he doing a movie, right? Oh my God. <laughs> and he, uh, He's hilarious. He did a character that was similar to you, man. And let's be clear, he stole his style from me. Mm. But a real announcer doesn't have to wear pants. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Let me say something to you. we not been twins, I would have more hair. You took half of my hair. Little off the top, bang. How you feel about that? I know, I know, it's got, you got a funny bone in your it's body. A, man, I love it, I love it. I Listen, you can't sit in the position that I'm in coming at cats every day and then get all <laughs> soft when they get at you. I didn't think my hairline was that damn bad. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna, let me be clear, but... Damn, it was funny. It was a Cleveland A. Smith. It was like, it was hilarious, man. We got some plan coming. I'm going to get him back. But we you got better. some plan coming. But that's my man. You know, he called me and he told me he was going to do it. He said, So he got your you know, permission yeah, yeah, first. No, oh, no doubt. No doubt. He, was a, he did it first, but then he called me and said, I got more. You good with it? I said, I'm good, man. Do your thing, bro. But I mean, it's like, it's all love because, like I said, they encourage me. All of y'all encourage me like I encourage y'all. It's yes. like, how am I get mad at Jamie? Jamie, I need you. What you need? Now. When? Show up. Done. Yeah. You know, how am I get mad at him? He, he's a comedian. That's and what it, he do. It, it's kind of stupid. I mean, it ain't going to help me to get mad. Nah. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to make people like you more, Man, believe it or not. You don't mess with comedians. You can't win. No. Nah. I mean, you laugh and get a little, even, first of all, it is funny, but even if it wasn't <laughs> funny, I'd still laugh, because I'm like, I ain't messing with no damn Jamie Foxx. I mean, I, I, I can't win that argument, dog. You don't win with comedians, they bro. They go on and Yo, on. On and on and on nonstop. <laughs> Oh, a movie three years later still hell talking yeah. about still you. Still talking about you. And, la and, and it's funny as hell, too. <laughs> no, you can't win that. No, make, comedians should always be your best friends. Right. You, know what, I, I, you know what I love? I love when you, when you, when you get on there and, and you and Max. Max. I love Max. I can't even front. I love Max. Yeah. Max. Max got hard. I love the way Max get down with you. And then you, you, he tries. You, you he shaping tries. him, though. You shaping him. He tries. He tries. You shaping him. He tries. He's you shaping they, him, though. There are levels to this. That's your word. There are levels you to this. You shaping him, Steven. You, I'm trying. You shaping him. I'm trying. I'm trying. The better he is, the better it is for the show. <laughs> so I'm not hating, you know, but there are levels to this. He's got to get up. Levels he and knows. layers. He knows. Levels and layers. <laughs> Say what? You see that old rap video of him? Yeah. <laughs> he did good. He did good. He did good. He did good. Got skills. Got stamina. Got from Panama, body drop for body shots, cause I could box, no need for clocks or karate chops. That's your work, man, quit playing. That's your work. When he finally come out fine-tuned and he a hundred thousand, you gonna say, man, look at, you gonna be like Dr. Frank. I'm gonna be proud. You gonna look at him like, look at my wife. That's right. Look at him. There's no success without a successor. There it is, there. You know what I'm saying? We inside the Smoker Studio every day, people, AKA real nigga shit, I'm gonna ask you some questions you answer to the best of your ability. Sure. What's the first thing you do or think of when you wake up? God. Hot or cold? Hot or cold? Mm hmm I don't understand that question. What do you mean? Hot or cold? Well, hot. I'll go with hot. Tacos or burgers? Burgers. Ass or titties? 
Always, always <laughs> ask. That's true. I'm going to answer that. I mean, I know I'm, I'm associated with Walt Disney, but damn it, everybody knows that I'm a bottom feeder. Okay. I mean, we all know that. Bottoms up. All right. <laughs> what are your favorite pair of shoes of all time? I would have to go, I don't remember which Jordans they were, but it was in 1989, 1990 that I had them. What color? Uh, it was white with the silver on the side, silver and black little okay. guys on the side. I know what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite thing to cook? Um, lasagna, and I can make it from scratch on my own. Boy, you talking like you're trying to come on the Martha and Snoop show. Stop with all that. <laughs> Listen, I've been trying to tell y'all. Knock I've it off, trying, Look, they had me on the chew. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for an invite from Martha and Snoop. Okay, well, come we on now. Eat. You said lasagna, lasagna. we're going to have to get you on there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? What's the worst job you've ever had? Um, I was working in sanitation when I, I lied. I was 14, and I lied that I was 16 so I could have a summer job. <laughs> and I was working in sanitation cleaning up the parks. You know, some of those things you see cats that might have been in jail and yeah. they're on the highway yeah. and they clean up. So I was doing all of that, and I was doing it day and night, night and day. And what happened is you're young. Even when you're young, you're still trying to get with honeys here and there. And I always smell because I was working around garbage all damn day. <laughs> So it wasn't a good experience. Community service, huh? That's right. Something like that. <laughs> What's the best live show you've ever seen? Janet Jackson showed up Madison Square Garden. Uh, was it Rhythm Nation? I believe it was Rhythm Nation. Yes, it was. That was a cold. She cold. was special. Oh, man. Janet, Janet, well, let me take that back. Janet is special. Say that. Yes. I think Not I as special as Beyonce, thing. but special. <laughs> but special. In her time, she was more special than Beyonce, because Beyonce was a little bitty puppy. Okay. When Janet was doing her thing. Well, that's true. You understand that's true. me? But Janet never had that voice. No, Not but she voice. had those moves. Yes, she did. She had all <laughs> those moves. All of them. <laughs> if you were stuck on an island for a year and could only listen to three albums, what would they be? I'm not good with albums. I'm good with songs. Well, say it then. You can only listen so, to three songs. So, Prince, mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to Prince, mm -hmm. right? Damn it, if it wasn't for R. Kelly with the pedophilia, <laughs> man, I'd be wanting to go, R. Kelly, man. 12 play? I mean, come on. I mean, I love me some R. Kelly and I love Joe. I love R. Oh, I mean, yes. I listen to my hip hop and all that, but I love R&B. I love R&B, and I'm a big Joe fan. Yeah. Joe's music is sweet. It's yeah. real, real nice. Joe is cold. No doubt. If you could remake any movie and star in it, what would it be? I'll do you one better. I would do Training Day, and I would not replace Denzel, the great Denzel. Mm. What I would do is be Ethan Hawke's character. Ooh. <laughs> so me you would Denzel. be in the passenger seat? Me and Denzel. Me and For Denzel, yes. So For you, Denzel, you would take yes. the passenger seat? For Denzel. <laughs> Any I can't see you taking no passion. No, no, for D, for D, for Diesel, no doubt. I don't believe it. And I'm telling you the truth. I don't I believe he it. don't believe it either. But <laughs> I don't it's the believe truth. It. It's the <laughs> truth. I would, nope. I, I would do it. I would not play a leading role. I would happily do Training Day with Denzel, and I would be Ethan Hawke's character. I love that. I love that. I think Denzel got killed in, in Training yeah, Day. Yes, so he can't. died at the end, no <laughs> doubt. He died at the end. And then at that, but that was after he got the crack out of your, your mouth because you were hiding under your tongue. He got the you crack was in out a of me? You was in a wheelchair. You was in a wheelchair and you was trying to, you know, you, was, you, you pushed Ethan Hawke aside even though you were in the wheelchair. And then, he was then, weak. And then, yeah, he was. And then Denzel came and got you. And then Denzel came and got you. Didn't I tell him, nigga, you know? put me in the front seat, with, put me in the back seat with this nigga. There you go. I was ready to get out with it. There you go. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's a real question. Yeah. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Superman, easy. I made a steal, all right? So, and I can fly. I ain't got to take no flights. <laughs> you know, I ain't got to wait at the airport. I ain't got to do anything. I can get anywhere that I want to go in a matter of seconds, if not minutes. And I can fly, and it's free. And Plus, you can shoot at me. You can't hurt me. I made a steal. Now, it would definitely be Superman. Can you see through walls, too? Yeah, but I ain't even think about that. It don't matter. If I'm coming through the wall, what does it matter whether I can see through it or not? I ain't worried about it. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. You know? Superman coming right. through the Superman. wall with damn his eyes be, closed. It damn sure wouldn't be Batman. It damn sure wouldn't be Batman. Why? Cape Crusade. Well, because he don't have any powers. He just has a costume with, 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 with tricks. You know, that's all he got. Gadgets. I mean, that's all he has. You know? But Batman got a bankroll, though. 
He got a bankroll, but I mean, you Superman, you don't need it. What 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 can't you have that you oh, want? Oh, you can just break in the bank. You and can take do whatever. You, you, do, you take whatever you want. Anybody <laughs> gonna charge you? You fly away. Fly away with the money. That's right. Fly away with it. Ain't this how Superman fly? That's right. It's one of the ways he used to, no doubt. That's how he turns. He goes like this and he turns. <laughs> That's the turn move? Yeah. The so this the this the straight way? Yeah. And then when he turn, he go here? Yeah. <laughs> I don't see how anybody would pick another superhero. Who else is there? Who wants to be the Hulk, big and green? All right? You ain't gonna get no love. Who are like, Aquaman, you underwater, swimming with fish. That ain't nothing attractive. <laughs> Thor, you got a hammer, and you from another planet. <laughs> well, I mean, what the hell is that? I mean, I, I, Spider-Man, well, you know, what, what the hell is that? You, you spinning webs and jumping from building to building? That don't help anything. I can't see how anybody would pick somebody other than please, Superman. Please don't stop. Just keep <laughs> I just, I just don't understand.